In this lecture, you'll learn about the different administrative components on the cluster. I'll tell you about volume zero and aggregate zero, also the RDB, that's the replicated database, and finally about our admin SVMs. When the system initially comes to you from the factory, it's already got ONTAP installed and the system image is stored on Compact Flash Boot Media. That's what the system boots up from. So it's able to boot up into the operating system, but it's got a blank config there ready for you to start configuring the system. When you do configure the system, that information is stored on disk. And as you learned in the last lecture about the ONTAP architecture, we've got our disks, our aggregates, and our volumes, and the volume is the lowest level that data can be accessed at. So because that system information you configure is stored on disk, we need to have a volume and an aggregate to be able to store it on. The volume for that system information is vol zero, volume zero and it is stored on aggregate zero. The system information is replicated between all the different nodes in the cluster. It's possible that a node could fail, so obviously we don't wanna have it just sitting on one node, we wanna have it on all nodes so they've all got access to that same information. And on each node, that information is stored on vol zero, which is in aggregate zero. So that system information, including the replicated database that I'll start talking about on the next slide, and log files are stored on vol zero. The system information, as I said, is replicated between all the different nodes in the cluster, and vol zero is dedicated for system information. You cannot have any normal user data saved in vol zero. Okay, so one of the things on there is the RDB, the replicated database. The RDB has five units. That's the Management Gateway, the Volume Location Database, the Virtual Interface Manager, Blocks Configuration and Operations Management, and the Configuration Replication Service. One node in the cluster will be elected the Replication Master for each of the RDB units. So that is in control of the replication. The same node will typically be the master for all units. Typically, it will be the first node in the cluster, but that can change if there's any failover events. Okay, so let's talk about those different units. The first one was the management gateway. That provides the management command line interface. The entire cluster, so all the nodes that make up the cluster are managed as a whole. There's one command line interface that you use to manage all nodes. You don't need to configure nodes individually. So this is something that can confuse beginners to NetApp on tap. You know, when we actually built the cluster, we configured a separate management IP address for each of the separate nodes. So what some beginners think is, oh, I have to connect to... For example, in our cluster 172.23.1.12 to manage node 1. I configure to dot 13 to manage node 2 and so on. But it doesn't work like that. If we had to manage each of our nodes separately, that would be super inconvenient. So you actually manage the entire cluster as a whole. So for example, let's say we've got our aggregates on node 1 and we've got our aggregates on node 2. Two. You don't connect to node 1 to manage its aggregates and connect to node 2 to manage its aggregates. You connect to the cluster management address. And if you're using the GUI system manager, when you go to the aggregates page, you will see the aggregates for both node 1 and node 2. If you wanted to create a new aggregate on either node, you do it from that one interface. The same with the command line. When you connect with the command line, you can see the aggregates across all the nodes in the cluster and you can create an aggregate on any node in the cluster as well. Obviously, not just aggregates, everything that you manage in the system is all managed from the one single pane of glass. You can use the GUI or the command line to manage the cluster by connecting to the cluster management IP address. So that's where you'll normally connect to. 
And when you make any changes, those changes are going to be replicated between all the nodes in the cluster. We're all going to have that information stored on their local volume zero. Next one is the volume location database, the VLDB. It lists which aggregate contains each volume and which node contains each aggregate. A client might connect to a different node than the one which hosts the volume. So for example, say that we have got a four node cluster and we've got a volume on node one, which a client is going to connect to. Well, we don't just configure an IP address on node one for the client to connect to. We'll actually configure an IP address on all four nodes in the cluster. That's the best practice thing to do. And we're going to load balance the incoming connections across all four nodes. So we can get better performance from the system rather than having all the clients hit one node. We're going to have those incoming connections spread across all four nodes in the cluster. So say that a client hits node four and it wants to access a volume which is on node one well node four needs to know where that volume is so the vldb is what is used to keep track of that information also as in the administrator you can move a volume to a different aggregate let's say that the aggregate is running out of disk space or maybe you want to move the volume to lower performance disks because it's older data data now you can do that by doing a volume move when that happens, the VLDB is going to be updated to reflect the change of which aggregate the volume is in now. And the VLDB is cached in memory on each node to optimize performance. So it's stored on Vol0 on the hard disks. It's also cached in memory as well to get that really good performance. Next unit is the Virtual Interface Manager. IP addresses on the system live on a logical interface, a LIF. We'll be talking about LIFs in way more detail when we get to the networking section. Those logical interfaces are not tied to a physical part on the system so they can move. That's why we use a logical interface rather than putting the IP address directly onto the physical interface. And the virtual interface manager lists which physical interface the logical interfaces are currently on. A reason that a logical interface would move from one physical part to a different one would be if a node failed, for example. Next unit is the Blocks Configuration and Operations Management, that's BCOM. Our SAN protocols use block access from the client, so the Blocks Configuration and Operations Management unit is storing information for our SAN protocols. It includes information on the LANs and the I groups, which is how LUN masking is configured in NetApp. If you're not sure about LUN masking, go and watch my intro to SAN and NAS storage course, which you've got access to through this course. And finally, we've got the configuration replication service. The configuration replication service is used by Metro Cluster to replicate configuration and operational data to the remote secondary cluster. What Metro Cluster is, is it is a disaster recovery feature. So you can have half of your system in one building and you can have the other half of the system in a separate building in a different area. That way, if you lose either building, your clients still get access to their data. This is another thing that we'll be covering in more detail later on in the course. Okay, so that was all the different units in the RDB. Next thing that I want to talk about is our admin SVMs. Before we get on to the admin SVMs, let's have a reminder about what our data SVMs are. We covered these in the last lecture. So your data storage virtual machines serve data to clients. When I was talking about SVMs in the last lecture, it was our data SVMs that I was talking about. And whenever you hear anybody talking about SVMs in general, they're always talking about data SVMs. So these are the ones that serve the data to the clients. No data SVMs exist by default when the system first comes online. So you need to have at least one data SVM for clients to access their data. You can create multiple data SVMs. For example, if you want to have secure multi-tenancy between your different departments or customers, or if you want to split out the management of different SAN and NAS protocols, so it looks like they're on different storage systems. Each data SVM 
does appear as a separate storage system to clients. So if you've got a department A SVM and a department B SVM, they've got their own volumes, so their own data, they've got their own IP addresses, and from the client's perspective, they look like completely separate storage systems. Okay, so that was our data SVMs. Next up, let's talk about our administrative SVM. So the admin SVM is also known as the cluster management server, and it provides management access to the system. The admin SVM is created during system setup. So you remember when we run the cluster setup wizard, we created our cluster. We also configured our node management address and we configured our cluster management address. When we were doing that, the system was creating the admin SVM for those to live on. The admin SVM does not host user volumes, doesn't have any user data on there. It's purely for management access. And the admin SVM owns the cluster management lift. So when we did the system setup, we set the cluster management IP address that is owned by the admin SVM. The cluster management logical interface can fail over to any physical part throughout the cluster that is used for management. So it could be on node one right now. If node one fails, it could fail over to node two so we can still access the cluster to manage it. We've also got our node SVM as well. So the global cluster management IP address lives on the global admin SVM. Our node management addresses live on the node SVM. Just like the admin SVM, again, the node SVMs are used purely for management access. You've got a separate node SVM for each node. They're also created during the system setup, and this is where your node management lives. The node management lift can fail over to another management part on the same node. So the cluster management address can fail over to any management port throughout any nodes on the entire cluster. The node management lift always stays on that one node. Okay, I know, again, for beginners, that this thing about the data SVM and the admin SVM can be a little bit confusing. Basically, when you're working with the cluster, you are going to be working with your data SVMs. You'll be setting those up and configuring client access to their data. The admin SVM is created automatically when you do the cluster setup. And after that, you can basically forget about it. It's there. It's basically just there so that you can connect to the cluster and manage it. And it's just that we need somewhere for that cluster management IP address to live. So after the initial setup, you can probably pretty much forget about the admin SVM. You're never going to have to consider it again. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.